because there are only two learning outcomes need to be uh, master. The first state the types of lipid and follow by describe the structure of fatty acid and glycerol. So we move on to the first slide. Even though the definition and the characteristic is not uh, in our syllabus nowadays, yeah, but we still have to introduce you what is lipid actually. This is because uh, it's, it can help you to cover the whole topic one easily. So if you go through or revise back what we have learned last week, right? Uh, molecules of life, we can basically divide it into two groups. The first group is inorganic molecules and the, the only molecules representing the inorganic molecules is water because the elements of one water is consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atoms, whereas no carbon found. That's why they are inorganic molecules. However, our, our topic one, right, there are a few organic molecules because these all molecules, they consist of hydrogen, oxygen, and also the carbon. Okay, so from the organic molecules, it can be further divided into two, polymer and non-polymer. Okay, why we say so is because you will notice last week we studied about carbohydrates. Carbohydrate is a polymer because these large molecules, they consist of monomer, which is called as monosaccharide. Yaitu, carbohydrate yang kita study pada 1.2 tu, setiap jenis atau setiap contoh, dia punya monomer, yaitu dia punya building block. Okay, dia punya building block bahan-bahan yang membina karbohidrat itu berulangan, repeating. Okay, they are the repeated units. Dan setiap unit yang berulangan tu sama jenis. Kita panggil dia monomer. Untuk karbohidrat nama dia monosaccharide. Dan setiap monosaccharide dia terdiri daripada elemen carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So this week, right, we are going to cover 1.4 proteins, 1.5 nucleic acid which are also polymer. So you will notice they are the large molecule that consists of different monomers. But today, we are going to study the only organic molecule which is non-polymer. Dia bukan polymer. Sebab building block dia, molecule-molecule yang membina lipid ini, dia bukan monomer. Iaitu molecule-molecule yang membina lipid Dia adalah molekul yang bukan ulangan. Dia tidak repeat. Tetapi mereka masih organik sebab dia ada carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. So, if we refer to the uh, OCD plus, right, we have to briefly mention about the properties of lipid. The unique characteristic of lipid because it's very famous in your MCQ. Okay, the objective questions. So, if we refer to the first unique characteristic, they are a molecule that able to release higher energy, especially we always compare with carbohydrate. Because the carbohydrate we study, right, in the 1.2, the previous subtopic, especially such as glycogen and the starch, even though they are not in the first year syllabus, but you can go through your, your notes. Eh? The both molecules, glycogen and starch, they able to provide energy also. But what makes them difference is in lipid, the bond between the C and the H, they are stronger. That means they carry higher energy. Okay, so when it has been broken down, it's able to release the higher amount of energy. Okay, the second is the lipid is hydrophobic molecules. Hydro means water. Phobic means phobia. Okay, they tak suka air. So, dengan kata lain, they are water insoluble molecule. Tita terlarut. Okay. Okay, kenapa dia tita terlarut? Sebab dia berkaitan dengan lagi satu konsep dia, the ratio of the carbon to oxygen. Okay, nisbah carbon dengan 
bilangan atom oxygen tu. So banding dengan carbohydrate, the ratio between these two atoms, right, the carbon atoms in one lipid molecule is much higher than the oxygen atoms and make it okay, water insoluble. So how to dissolve lipid? We need to use another solution which is organic solvent as lower density. So this is why you notice the lipid always floats at the surface of water when you mix it. Especially you mix the lipid which is liquid foam. Okay, so the third characteristic is lower density. Ketumpatan banding dengan air yang masih dalam keadaan cecair. So it's quite related with what we learned uh, previous subtopic. Maximum density at 4 degrees Celsius of water. That's why air selalunya lebih tumpat kalau banding dengan kebanyakan uh, liquid di uh, permukaan bumi. The next is high viscosity. Kelikatan dia lebih tinggi. The size of molecule in the lipid is much larger than water, which is only H2O. Disebabkan molecule dia lebih besar, maka dia punya sliding between each other is lower. Okay, dia nak berkelongsor antara sama, satu sama lain sangat perlahan. Okay, the last is greasy. Greasy maksudnya bila kita sentuh dengan tangan, kita rasa it dengan uh, sensory organ, kita rasa dia macam licin, macam sabun, uh, detergent, pencuci uh, mangkuk ke, okay. Uh, dia rasa licin. Itu greasy nama dia. Okay, now we look at the first learning outcome. Student must be able to state three types of lipid. State. So the spelling is very important. Okay, nowadays, we have to focus on the first type, which is triglyceride. But triglyceride itself have two types. Ada dua jenis lagi bawah triglyceride. Satu ialah bentuk semasa dia solid. Satu ialah semasa dia liquid. Tetapi, untuk uh, status of matter yang berbeza ini, nama dia berbeza. Triglyceride yang semasa liquid, apakah nama dia? Yang tadi you all ada kata. Mula dengan O. Oil. Ya. Yeah. Oil. So, dengan kata lain, oil is a type of triglyceride. How about the solid triglyceride? Butter. Oh, butter adalah example. Ya, yeah, saya, saya sudah dengar jawapan. Butter adalah example. Tapi, actually, the proper term is fat. Okay. Fat is the solid form of triglyceride. Example dia adalah butter. Atau margarine. Okay. So, dudunya kalau bahasa Melayu, lemak nama dia. Hanya status of metal berbeza. Okay, the second type is this one. Phospholipid. Phospholipid in first year, we didn't study detail in chapter 1. But chapter 2, you have to study a bit more details. Okay, steroid are, are a type of lipid. They are, mereka adalah jenis lemak. Tetapi, dia uh, adalah molecule-molecule yang kita kata menunjukkan fungsi-fungsi tertentu dalam living things. Okay, they are molecules actually. Okay, so usually the steroid, we, we always talk about the issues adalah yang berkaitan dengan penyala gunaan steroid. Okay, the uh, abuse of steroid. Because some of the artists, some of the uh, athlete, ahli sukan akan menyala guna steroid ini untuk kepentingan tertentu. Okay, so itu adalah kadang-kadang uh, atau negara di, dianggap salah guna. Terutamanya di tamasya sukan, contoh sekarang musim olimpik kan, uh, so they always have the issue or this athlete they already misuse the steroid because they want to increase the phys physical fitness okay, untuk uh, result yang lebih baik. Steroid, kalau banting tengah phospholipid dan triglyceride, buat dia paling special ialah dia punya steroid skeleton. Dia ada rangka yang sangat unik sebab dia terdiri daripada four fuse hydrocarbon rings. Kita akan nampak ya ini adalah gelang yang terdiri daripada hydrogen and carbon. That's why nama dia hydrocarbon ring. Dan empat-empat gelang ini, mereka bergabung antara satu sama lain. That's why panggil dia fuse. Okay. So, commonly for general structure, one steroid molecule, they have maximum 17 carbon. So, setiap pucu pada gelang tu mewakili carbon. Seperti kita belajar untuk uh, alpha glucoses pada 
1.2. Okay, dalam satu topik 1.2. Okay. So, what make them different from each other? Di bawah steroid ada banyak-banyak lagi members. How to differentiate them is the side chain. Dia punya rantai sampingan. So, we always use this example in biology. Cholesterol is an example of steroid. And they show the steroid skeleton. But what makes them different from other steroid is the side chain. Because in second year, you are going to study another two types, uh, many other types of steroid, such as sex hormone, testosterone, progesterone. Semua ni adalah contoh steroid. So, testosterone adalah sejenis hormon yang bila kita uh, suntikkan kadang-kadang untuk tujuan sukan atau untuk tujuan tertentu kita ada suntikan testosterone dia boleh meningkatkan kita punya performance dari segi sukan. Okay, this is what I said just now, penyala gunaan steroid. Okay. okay, now I move on to the second type here, phospholipid. Again, first year syllabus, we just need the student to stay phospholipid. But here I would like to a bit details because related with your second topic. Okay, chapter 2, we are going to study this molecule one more time. Okay, berbeza dengan steroid, phospholipid tidak menunjukkan skeleton yang empat gelang tu tidak. Tetapi kamu tengok ya, dia terdiri daripada satu molekul nama dia glycerol. Glycerol ini adalah molekul yang tiga karbon, satu, dua, tiga karbon. Dan Molekul ini akan memegang atau terikat dengan dua uh, two fatty acid chain. So this is one fatty acid chain. Okay, this is one. This is the second one. Okay, dua fatty acid chain. Dua-duanya adalah rantai uh, asid lemak. Apa yang berbezanya nanti kita akan study apa yang buat mereka berbeza ialah ketutukan double bond itu. Okay. Some of the carbon, they have the double bond between it. Okay, the next is this uh, glycerol, the first and second carbon attached to the fatty acid chain. But the third carbon will be attached to a phosphate group, satu phosphate group. And this phosphate group, okay, yang di sini PO4 minus ini, this phosphate group, they will carry one R group. R dalam biologi, dia ada maknanya berbeza-beza. So, different phospholipid have different R groups. Okay, so R group adalah berbeza mengikut jenis-jenis phospholipid tu. Tapi, dalam selipas kita, kita suka bagi contoh choline. Choline is an example of R group. Because you will study that the phospholipid molecule that have choline attached to the phosphate, they are the phospholipid will be found in the cell membrane. Chapter 2, you will study the cell membrane. Okay? Okay, so now we look at the overall structure here. Yeah? The choline, phosphate, glycerol, they are all charged molecule. Molecule yang are the charge. So they will contribute to a part we call it as hydrophilic heat. Kepala yang okay. okay, now this is the part they able to react with water because of all the molecules found in this area, they are charged. Only charged molecule at a polar molecule can react with water. But you look at the phospholipid, they have the another part we call it as tears, echo tear. These tears are hydrophobic. Phobia, dia tak suka air. Okay, tak boleh react dengan air sebab dia ada konsep dia punya fatty acid chain itu terdiri daripada hydrocarbon rantai rantai hydrocarbon yang panjang. Okay, tadi kita kata the long hydrocarbon chain iaitu setiap pucuk ini mewakili C. Okay, C yang terikat dengan hidrogen. Okay, jadi ini, menun, ini memberikan sifat hydrophobic. Maka nanti chapter 2 kamu akan study istilah ini. Kalau satu molecule dia mengandungi dua ciri yang bertentangan. Iaitu bahagian yang boleh react dengan water, bahagian yang tidak boleh react dengan water. Dua-dua ciri dijumpai, kita panggil dia amphipathic molecule. Okay, amphipathic. Okay, so this is introduction about the phospholipid. 
for you to have better understanding in chapter 2. But no matter how, today, right, actually the main molecule to be studied in detail is triglycerides. T-R-I, tri. Tri dalam biologi, dia ada makna tiga. Okay. So, dia, uh, molecule ini ada lagi satu nama, iaitu tri glycerol. The diagram here are showing you a molecule of triglyceride, okay, which is actually consists of one glycerol, dia terdiri daripada satu glycerol, dan tiga fatty acid. That's why namanya TRI di depan. Tiga fatty acid. Asia ini adalah tepetan daripada asid itu. Dan dia ada glycerol. Okay. Okay, macam mana satu molekul glycerol boleh bergabung dengan tiga molekul fatty acid? Sebenarnya melalui proses condensation. Iaitu mereka buangkan air. Okay, tetapi untuk lipid, condensation diberikan satu nama khas. Iaitu esterification. Describe means that you must a you must be able to draw, you must be able to explain. Okay, so this is only a brief explanation, but I think it's enough for first year. First of all, student must always remember, glycerol is an alcohol, and this is an alcohol with three carbon, so carbon satu, dua, tiga. And each carbon, they carry a function group, which is hydroxyl group. Okay, so we have three hydroxyl group in one glycerol. And each carbon able to form maximum four bonds. So bond pertama, kedua, tiga, empat. Okay, maka ikatan lain kan akan memegang H. Okay, so you look at this carbon one and carbon two. Okay, now... One, first bond, second bond, third and fourth. So it carry H. Okay, uh, itulah kita punya glycerol structure. This is why we have the chemical formula C3H8O3. Now we look at fatty acid. Fatty acid, the general formula is RCOOH because it's an acid. Kalau dia acid, dia mesti ada function group. Kita panggil dia carboxyl group. So this is the C double bond O O H. Okay. So if you study this part, right, you will notice they have the bond, the C yeah, have the bond one, two, three, four. Okay. The bond here will be attached to a R. Why is a R? Because different fatty acid have different R group. I mean the alkyl group. Alkyl maksudnya, kumpulan uh, function in function group ini, dia terdiri daripada carbon dan hydrogen sahaja. So, untuk fatty acid, dia sebenarnya menunjukkan rantai hydrocarbon itu. Okay? So, this is the long hydrocarbon chain which is represented by the R. So, in SM, you don't need to memorize. Okay? You don't need to memorize the example but this is important how to draw the rcooh as i shown here and our group yeah the long hydrocarbon chain actually is the part yeah make the whole fatty acid a molecule which is non-polar and hydrophobic walaupun dia acid acid tapi bila dia dia memegang yeah hydrocarbon chain yang panjang ni nanti kamu tengok bila dia bergabung dengan glycerol Triglyceride itu masih molekul yang hydrophobic. Okay. okay, so kita teruskan ya. Okay, fatty acid ada dua jenis. Okay, satu namanya saturated fatty acid atau dulu kita belajar dia asid lemak tepu. A second one is unsaturated fatty acid iaitu asid lemak tidak tepu. Now a days we make it very simplified. Okay, kita study dengan sangat-sangat simple. So kita tengok ya, kenapa dia panggil dia saturated fatty acid? Sebab untuk saturated fatty acid, apa yang buat dia berbeza, uh, berbeza dengan unsaturated ialah between the carbon atom, there's only single bond. Okay, apa maksudnya? Okay, kita tengok di sini ya. Ini adalah satu molekul triglyceride. Okay, satu molekul lemak, ya, triglyceride. 
Sebab kenapa? Saya nampak dia ada dia punya kriseror part, bahagian kriseror yang tiga carbon. Tetapi setiap okay, setiap OH group dia telah terikat dengan satu fatty acid sebab saya nampak bayang si double bond O ini. Dan dia ada out group dia. Okay, ini bahagian out group dia. Okay, try glycerate ada tiga fatty acid. That's why saya nampak ada tiga R di sini. Okay, ada tiga R. Okay. So, kalau kita tengok ya, apa yang dibawa masuk oleh gambar uh, kita panggil dia schematic diagram ini. Okay, kita ambil satu bahagian yang diwarnakan kuning ya dalam gambar ini. Okay, ingat ya, ZZ line ini, ZZ line ini maksudnya hydrocarbon chain yang panjang. Setiap pucu ini mewakili ketutukan C. So, di sini ada C. Okay, di sini ada C. Okay, setiap pucu ini adalah C. Okay. Kalau dia lukiskan dengan satu garisan sahaja, maksudnya they are only single bond between the C. Okay. Dan kita faham setiap C boleh membawa empat ikatan secara maksimum. So, satu, dua, tiga, empat. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Okay. C yang ter paling kanan ini, dia akan terikat dengan C satu lagi. Okay. So, satu di sini, dua, tiga, empat. Okay. Apa maksudnya maximum number of hydrogen sebab student kena ingat walaupun C terikat dengan C yang berjiranan tetapi dia punya ikatan yang selebihnya akan membawa hydrogen. This is what we call hydrocarbon chain. Dan setiap ikatan membawa hidrogen, that's why mereka membawa hidrogen atom dengan bilangan yang paling banyak maksimum tu. Usually, the fat dia, the whole molecule is called fat dia. This triglyceride, we notice that all the out group, all the out group in the fatty acid are straight chain. Okay, iaitu fatty acid yang kita kata saturated kan. So, lemak ini adalah saturated fat. Usually, animal fat is saturated fat. Okay. Lemak haiwan adalah lemak tepu. Kalau kita banding dengan unsaturated fatty acid, unsaturated fatty, unsaturated fatty acid must contain at least one. Sekurang-kurangnya satu double bond between the C. So, kita tengok contoh ya untuk R yang pertama ini. Ini adakah dia mempunyai double bond kalau kita tengok gambar di sini? R1 ada double bond? Tak ada. Tak ada. Tak ada. Ya. Ya, bagus. Dia tekan R3. Sebab ada hint ya, kalau kita banding dengan gambar yang tadi kiri, sebelah kiri kita, nampak tak ZZ, uh, ZZ line tu yang mewakili hydrocarbon chain tu, dia masih lulus. Linear. Okay, linear. Sama juga dengan R2. They both are saturated fatty acid. Ya, tadi yang kata R3. R3 ini, kalau kita perhatikan dengan PKFU, There is one double bond found. So, kalau kita tengok buku STPM, dia ada banyak contoh unsaturated fatty acid. Kadang-kadang, awan ni pun ada double bond. Okay, depends on the fatty acid we are going to study. Okay, so now, if you look at this diagram. Uh, Miss, so, uh, yeah. boleh lah jadi kalau dekat R3 tu kan, you will uh. more, ada lebih daripada satu uh, double bond. Maksudnya, double bond tu semua dicumpai pada uh, molecule R3. fatty acid yang sama ni. Uh -huh. Jarang oh, tak ada. Oh, biasa asing-asing lah. Biasa R1, R3 ke? Okay, okay. Ya, yeah, betul. Dia sebab dia berkaitan dengan konsep kimia. Sebab kenapa? Kalau kita tengok, uh, saya bagi uh, sedikit uh, okay, penjelasan yang uh, asas, sangat asas. Uh, saya pun lama tak ajar kimia kan. Saya bisa saya salah cakap istilah tertentu. Tapi sebenarnya dia macam ni. Kalau kita tengok tab, uh, garisan yang di sini, double bond ni. Saya ambil contoh ini ya. Uh. Okay. Kita tengok C di sini, dia sudah ada double bond dengan C berjiranan. So, saya kira ya, satu, dua, tiga, bond yang keempat mesti di sini. Saya tak boleh lukis di sini. Kenapa? Sebab ikatan yang keempat itu, dia mesti adalah ikatan yang terikat dengan C yang berjiranan. Okay, C yang berjiranan. Faham maksud saya kan? Okay, sama juga untuk konsep ini. Bom pertama, kedua, tiga, empat. 
Okay. Okay. Sekarang kenapa uh, jarang sekali kita nampak satu fatty acid ada dua double bond. Sebab kamu tengok ya. Di mana ada double bond. Dia akan menyebabkan uh, molekul ini memerlukan satu ruang. Dan the force between the double bond make the chain bend. Dia terlibat. This why kita nampak dia ada satu bending point. Bending point ini menyebabkan molekul ini sudah mengambil ruang yang besar. So jarang sekali kita ada nampak double bond. Jarang sekali kita nampak molekul itu bend macam ni. Do you understand me? Tak boleh. Oh, Do you understand me? Very very yeah. rare. Eh, very yeah. very rare. Sebab dia ada berkaitan dengan konsep kimia sebenarnya. Okay. Okay so sekarang saya nak terangkan sedikit ayat ini ya. Kenapa kita kata pekan maksimum. Sebab you tengok C double bond C ini uh, seperti konsep tadi satu, dua, tiga, empat. Okay, so sekali lagi satu, dua, tiga, empat. Sebab dia mesti memegang tengah C yang seterusnya. So saya tak boleh lukis yang keempat menghadap ke bawah. Okay, di mana ada ikatan yang tidak memegang kepada C selalunya membawa H. Okay, membawa H. Tapi kalau kamu betul-betul kira kan seolah-olah dia sudah tidak mencapai bilangan H yang maksimum seperti saturated fatty acid tadi. Sebab saturated fatty acid tadi kamu banding dia sudah ada 2 H lebih daripada yang ada double bond. Do you understand me? Yang konsep ini? Yes. Boleh? Yes. Ini? Okay good. Okay so sekarang kita tengok ya. Kalau lah lemak ini triglyceride ini dia membawa dia membawa salah satu fatty acidnya ada double bond. As I say sebenarnya berkaitan dengan a forces in the double bond itu, it cause this molecule bend to show the bending. Bila ada bending, you imagine uh, in this uh, fat, the molecule, each triglyceride molecule, they are not arranged orderly. Susunan dia sudah tidak teratur sebab mereka mengambil ruang. Okay, macam saya, saya angkat kaki I kan, saya macam sudah ambil ruang orang. Jadi dia tak susunkan tak atur. Itu yang menyebabkan molekul itu tidak menunjukkan arrangement yang yang close. That's why we have the fat which is in oil dalam keadaan liquid. So usually the plant fat or fish, sesetengah fish punya tu, utamanya yang kita panggil dia cod oil itu adalah unsaturated fat. Lemak yang tidak tepu sebab They contains unsaturated fatty acid. Jadi kalau macam ni, saya nak tunjuk contoh okay, of faham bila kalau dia keluar dalam SM, kita hanya nak student boleh manfaatkan tak knowledge saturated dan unsaturated itu sahaja. So apa yang penting ialah, you just remember steric acid is an example of saturated fatty acid. Dia bukan lemak, ya, dia fatty acid. And only acid is the Example of unsaturated fatty acid. They are fatty acid. They are not lipid yet. They just a building block of the triglyceride. Dia adalah bahan membina lemak. Okay. Okay. Sebenarnya apa yang berbeza antara steric acid dan oleic acid. I just want you know how to read the diagram. You see, since that they are acid, they must have the function group called as carboxyl group. COOH. But... If you calculate the, the hydrocarbon chain, kalau kita mengi, menghitung dia punya out group, okay, kalau kita kira out group dia, sebenarnya dua-duanya membawa C17. Okay, dua-duanya membawa carbon 17. Tapi, kamu kena ingat, ini setiap carbon itu, dia terikat dengan single bond. That's why, dia penuh dengan hydrogen. Okay, penuh dengan hidrogen. Tetapi untuk oleic acid at certain point, the C has one double bond. Okay, double bond muncul sekali. Maka menyebabkan dia ada satu keadaan tidak membawa hidrogen atom yang maksimum. Dan ini kalau kita uh, study dengan software tertentu bahawa uh, chemistry lab, we notice that this molecule, they show us a bending point. Bending point tu dalam kimia, kita panggil dia kin. Okay, this is why they prevent it to become solidified. Okay, itu yang saya nak highlight. So sekarang kita tengok ya, syllabus kita sekarang kalau kita tengok syllabus, data learning outcome yang berkaitan dengan illustration. So actually we don't need to draw the 
We don't need to master the technique of how to draw the formation and breakdown of triglyceride. But I, I just briefly show you because you still have to know the structure of glycerol and fatty acid. So let's get untuk menghasilkan triglyceride. Selalu ingat dia adalah organic molecule yang non-polymer. Sebab kita study dia punya building block, dia tak ada perulangan. Okay, dia tak ada ulangan. Kenapa kita cakap macam tu? Sebab dia terdiri daripada molecule yang macam ni. Ada tiga carbon. Apakah dia building block dia? Pertama, dia ada satu glycerol. Lepas tu, kita tahu setiap carbon mesti ada empat ikatan. So, satu di sini, dua, tiga, empat. So, untuk C kedua, dia sudah ada tiga. So, saya tambah lagi satu garisan. Untuk C ketiga, saya tambah lagi satu garisan. So, saya lengkapkan diagram ini dengan H. So, you must be able to draw the grass rod. Okay, and we must be able to draw fatty acid. Tapi, as I say, we don't need to draw the, the typical example. We just draw the general structure. So, fatty acid, dia punya formula ialah, dia mesti ada function group. Nama dia COOH. Okay, carboxyl group. So, C double bond dengan O. Then, single bond OH dia. Dan satu, dua, tiga. Sudah tiga ikatan. Dia ada ikatan keempat di mana membawa R. Okay. Dan triglyceride. Dia ada pendipatan tiga fatty acid. So, saya ulang sahaja lukisan fatty acid itu. Okay. Saya ulang lukisan itu. Okay. Jadi, melibatkan tiga fatty acid. Okay. So, macam mana... Uh, Tadi kita punya teori kata student must be able to describe okay, the structure and then must be able to describe the process. So, tadi saya sudah kata untuk menghasilkan triglyceride molecule yang lebih besar, proses yang terlibat adalah condensation iaitu membuangkan satu air. Okay, so, di sini kita akan nampak pembuangan air dia akan melibatkan H daripada hydroxyl group of the glycerol. Okay, kita Kali ini berbeza dengan maltose dia lah. Kita punya H2O itu, H datang daripada OH of the glycerol. Tetapi, OH mesti datang daripada carboxyl group. Maksud saya lah, kita tidak membenarkan student lukis macam ni. Walaupun masih ada erti H2O. Okay. Tak mungkin sebab ikut konsep kimia sekali lagi, ikatan ini, ikatan C dengan OH di sini, adalah lemah daripada ikatan C dengan OH di sini. Jadi, untuk bahagian glycerol, H sahaja mudah di donate, dikeluarkan. Okay, tak boleh keluarkan the whole hydroxyl group. This is why we do, we need to highlight here is, if you are asked to choose the diagram, which one is the correct diagram of the removal of water? Manakah satu adalah pembuangan air kan? Selalu ingat untuk Lipid dia berbeza sikit. Lipid dia strict sikit. Kita punya air sebenarnya H2O itu H daripada hydroxyl but OH from the carboxyl. Okay, so saya ketiga-tiga kawasan yang melibatkan condensation saya kena label. Dan kita boleh bagi satu signal, eh sorry, satu tanda ini adalah air dikeluarkan. So label sekali saja. Okay, tetapi saya baru confirm dengan uh, senior-senior lain Pen, lukisan untuk formation ni tak perlu menguasai tetapi lukisan untuk glycerol, fatty acid perlu. Hanya saya terangkan untuk kefahaman. Dan kamu tengok tadi nota ada kata untuk lipid, condensation dia diberikan nama khas iaitu esterification. Kenapa esterification? Because the product, the triglyceride, they contains a chemical bond we call it as, okay, we call it as ester. Okay, saya lengkapkan ikatan dulu ya. Okay, kamu imagine sekarang C ini, dia akan terikat kepada O. Kenapa O? Sebab masih ingat tak? Tadi H sahaja yang terlibat dalam condensation. Setiap C punya O masih ada. Okay. Dan O ini akan terikat kepada fatty acid. Fatty acid punya C. Sebab fatty acid punya carboxyl group OH telah terlibat dalam condensation. So, kita ada bahagian fatty acid yang dalam keadaan macam ni. So, this is 
but how we draw the triglyceride. Sebab tadi kata menghafalkan, lebih baik kita uh, faham konsep lebih senang. Sorry ya, ada kesilapan try. Okay, sebab dia tak boleh, ada double bond di sana. Okay, sini tak boleh double bond ya. Okay, so kita teruskan. Okay, so this is how we draw the triglyceride if SM asks you to draw for the triglyceride. So never, never, jangan lupa kita punya H. H penting ya. Okay, so this is balance the equation with the three H2O. Tiga H2O di remove. This is try, try, serai. Okay, but for lipid, it's very special, yeah? The bond labeling. Okay, the bond labeling very strict because you must be able to identify where is the kenapa proses dia esterification sebab kita nampak satu triglyceride itu dia ada tiga ikatan yang dinamakan ester linkages. Okay. Or as ester linkage. Linkage ada maksudnya satu ikatan yang terdiri daripada atom atoms from molecule yang berbeza. Why we say so? Because the O is originally from the hydroxyl group of the glycerol. Sebenarnya O di sini. And the C double bond O actually is originally from the carboxyl group of the fatty acid. So, ini adalah kawasan yang akan membentuk ikatan ester itu. That's why kita panggil dia ester linkages. Tetapi ada berbeza-beza punya labeling ya. Ada pensyarah universiti dia kata boleh label macam ni. Iaitu khas tunjuk kepada ikatan yang baru dibentuk itu. Ini kita panggil dia ester bond. This is why we call it as esterification. Okay? Okay, so... Itu, uh, Miss, kalau dia tanya kan, uh, why is the process called esterification? Boleh tak jawab? Because it has ester linkages. Apa yang paling baik ialah because we need the student to identify the building block. Apakah paham pembinaan dia? So the answer is because the glycerol, one glycerol is linked to three fatty acid through ester linkages. Oh, okay. One glycerol is linked to uh, what tadi? How many fatty acids? Acid? How many? Three fatty acids. Three fatty yeah. acids through uh, ester linkage. Ya, yeah, betul ester linkage. Yes. Okay, kejap ni. Ini adalah cara yang nampak tak? Saya nampak dulu ada uh, PSPM, ada skema jawapan dia memperkenalkan bond. Kalau bond, kita kena lukiskan anak-anak betul-betul touch garisan antara C dengan O itu sahaja. Do you understand me? Tapi kalau kamu tengok nota selaras, dia ada cara pen, uh, labeling yang berbeza. Iaitu dia lukiskan kotak tiga kali. Tetapi bila kita merangkumi atom yang berbeza daripada asal-usulnya daripada molekul yang berbeza, kita gantikan bond itu dengan perkataan linkage. The 1.3, you are you won't be asked to draw the formation how to break down. Tetapi maltose memang perlu. Okay, maltose memang kena menguasai ya, penulisan tu. Tetapi saya masih nak tunjuk sebab supaya you boleh asyik ingat macam mana nak lukiskan molekul-molekul tu. Try glyceride sekali lagi. Molekul yang terdiri daripada satu glycerol di mana dia punya O sekarang sudah terikat kepada bahagian fatty acid. Okay, so this is how I remember the drawing of triglyceride. Okay, okay, tulisan saya teruk ya. Nanti you all boleh praktis sendiri. And always remember, fill up the H. Okay, for the glycerol part. So this is one triglyceride. Okay, ini satu molekul yang kita kata triglyceride. Kalau glyceride ini dijumpai dalam keadaan solid, nama dia fat. Kalau di, dijumpai dalam uh, lemak yang liquid, nama dia oil. Itu maksud saya. Okay, triglyceride. So, how the triglyceride can be broken down? So, we need three water molecules. Okay, mesti I balancekan equation kita. So, we add one way arrow. Okay, arrow yang one way. Proses yang terlibat sekarang opposite. Iaitu, satu proses yang melibatkan pecahan. Lysis, maksudnya pecahan. Splitting yang melibatkan air, water. So, hydrolysis. So, bila kita hydrolysis, now we have the building block. Kita ada molekul yang membentuk triglyceride. Iaitu, satu molekul glycerol yang ada tiga carbon, 
Dan setiap kapan sekarang kita pulangkan dia punya H. Sebab daripada water. Okay. So ada hydrosyl group already. Dan jangan lupa dia punya hydrogen. Okay. Jangan lupa dia punya hydrogen. Okay. So this is one glycerol. Okay. Okay. Dan kita balancekan equation kita dengan members fatty acid. How many fatty acid I have to draw class? Three. 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 Yes. Always remember, don't need to draw the long CHCH. Don't need. We represent it with the R. Okay. But always draw the function group COOH. So COOH. Okay. So we repeat the drawing of the general structure of fatty acid. Okay. We draw. We complete the diagram. Okay. So how the HO can be written? to the fatty acid is come from the H2O again. Okay, itu maksud saya. Okay? So, kita balance kan, uh, kita label kan, kita punya uh, equation. Okay? okay, so I end my slide with this one. The final one is the importance here. Why we have to study triglyceride in details. Okay, dengan begitu uh, detail sekali. Sekali lagi, bahagian ni hanya famous dalam UPS, iaitu MCQ. As alternative yeah. respiratory Yes, as alternative respiratory substrate. Maksudnya, badan kita in living things, ah, in living things, we need a molecule substrate which involve in the process respiration. Do you still remember what is the main function of respiration? Okay, actually produce energy. Bagus. Produce energy. Kita study ini semester 2. Produce energy yang dalam, keada dalam bentuk ATP. Okay. Our body, living things, uh, for living, most of the living things, our main main respiratory substrate actually is glucose sebenarnya. Okay. Iaitu members carbohydrate. But lipid, it can be the alternative. Lipid adalah sampingan atau pilihan yang kedua. Kenapa kita panggil the alternative? It's because uh, in certain timing, yeah, that organism, they may have not enough glucose for the respiration process. But your body, many activities need the ATP. So how they make sure the respiration can can be continued or can occur to provide the energy is they shift, they shift to the lipid. They gunakan uh, molecule lipid itu tukar jadi substrate yang boleh diguna untuk respiration. Do you understand me? That's why kita panggil the alternative. Okay. Same to you may have a better idea about this function. But now we just briefly touch the importance. Okay, second year is storage. Not only the glycogen in animal. Now I'm talking about animal, yeah. Uh, animal, the glycogen is the energy storage molecule. But not only that, we have the lipid, which is a... Uh, molecule that contain higher energy than the carbohydrate. Why we always say that contain higher energy than the carbohydrate is again because the bond between the C and H. The bond between C and H in lipid is stronger than the same bond found in the carbohydrate. Sebab carbohydrate pun ada bond antara C dengan H itu. Tetapi bila banding, sini lebih kuat. Sebab kalau kita recall balik 1.2 kan, the carbohydrate monomers dia, okay, dia punya building block monomers dia adalah terdiri daripada monosaccharide yang dalam gelang structure. I mean the ring structure. So the C that carry the H, the bond usually uh, weaker, okay, lemah. Okay? So they have less energy. The third one, uh, certain animals, yeah, they will metabolize the lipid to become H2O. So, lipid uh, chemists, because their habitat is an arid environment. Iaitu satu uh, environment yang kita kata musim kemarau dia sangat panjang. Okay, jadi akan suka untuk dapat water source. So, how they make sure they can, uh, they can prevent from dehydration, they will metabolize the lipid in their body part. Okay, the next is heat insulator. Uh, this one we can uh, relate with ourselves. Beneath the skin, ya, di bawah kulit, kita sebenarnya ada satu lapisan lemak. Okay, uh, adipose tissue nama dia. Okay, adipose tissue. 
Okay, the adipose tissue consists of triglyceride molecules a lot. Okay, they they are poor in contacting heat. Dia lemah membawa heat. Dengan senang dengan kata lain, maksudnya dia memerangkap haba dalam body kita. The purpose is to maintain normal body temperature, especially when the environment temperature drop. Okay, kalau keadaan yang sangat sejuk, macam mana dia pastikan suhu badan kita mengalami perubahan yang extreme untuk enzim-enzim itu boleh berfungsi seperti biasa supaya kita tak mengalami keadaan yang sangat bahaya tau. Uh, that's why they are the very good uh, heat insulator. Okay, the last one is this one here. They are a good protector to certain internal organs, especially the kidneys. Okay, we always use the example of mammals here. Mammals. So you can you can try to locate where's your kidney? How many kidneys you have? Two. Two. Where can where can you find your kidney? At dekat the belakang. neck. Kat belakang mana? Dekat, dekat lamba. <laughs> Betul. Atau kita kata uh, dekat tengah pinggang kita kan. So you can feel it now. Kadang-kadang kita rasa penat kita feel it. Uh, that's very soft. Because why? Unlike the chest area. Tak sama seperti chest. Kita ada tulang tau. Ada uh, the the ribs. Beneath, uh, behind at the dorsal part, bahagian belakang, dia adalah soft part at the kidney region. So, and this is the part always will face the risk of kidney. Dia selalu adalah kawasan yang selalu menghadapi risiko dilanggar tau. So, macam mana nak absorb the the okay, the, the forces, the external force, pushing force itu, kidney dia disalaputi dengan lemak, adipose tissue juga yang ber, ber, keupayaan kita kata absorb. Okay, absorb the force. So, they are a good cushion. Okay, good cushion to the kidney. So, this is what I need to uh, close our slide today. So, any question you want to ask before we, we end the slot? Miss, yang kidney tu kan, kalau ditanya soalan hmm. pasal like uh, hmm. explain how triglycerides uh, protect the internal organ, boleh tak cakap act as cushion to absorb the shock? Okay, I prefer cushion tu adalah perkataan saya guna. Kalau boleh jangan gunalah, kita absorb shock. Oh, okay. It's very good. But